Time for our weekly arts and culture segment. We have our culture correspondent, Song Yujin, in the studio. Happy Friday, Yujin. Happy Friday, Jungmin. What do you have for us today? Well, Jungmin, can you believe that Bororo, the main character of the hit Korean animation, Bororo the Little Penguin, has turned 20 years old? Not really. <laughs> so this Monday, November 27th, marked exactly 20 years since Bororo was first aired on TV. And Bororo's global success has even their nicknames like President Bororo and the President of the Children. And experts are saying Bororo has paved the way for Korean animations on the global stage. So for this week, let's look back at Bororo's 20-year-long journey and its impact on the world of animation. <laughs> It's been 20 years since Bororo the Little Penguin started his adventure with his friends Eddie the Fox, Lupi the Beaver, Poby the Polar Bear, and Kurong the Dinosaur. It all started with Bororo's father, the creator Choi jong who had a vision of making an animation for toddlers. As Korea entered the animation scene a bit later, I believe that focusing on content for toddlers would be a way to compete with the powerhouse, that is Japan. Choosing animals over humans as the main characters helped sidestep potential cultural barriers when targeting the international market. We specifically went with penguins, an animal loved by children, yet not extensively showcased in animations. Che's strategy turned out to be successful. The animation was exported to France the same year it was released, hitting a 47% viewer rating on the French channel TF1. So far, it's been exported to over 180 countries. However, these numbers are not all that Bororo has achieved. It opened a new chapter for Korean animations. Before Bororo, Korean animators were primarily subcontracted by production companies in the U.S. and Japan. But Bororo was made entirely by Korean animators from character development and plot creation. In the content industry, one mega hit is crucial for a country to become globally competitive. That was Bororo. Its success comes from tapping into the niche market of toddlers, which was traditionally viewed as less lucrative even in animation powerhouses like the United States and Japan. After Bororo came Korean originals like Ping Fong's Baby Shark, Laba, Kokomong, and Tayo the Little Bus, thanks to increased investment. Their global success transformed Korea's animation landscape from a subcontractor to exporter. Despite these strides, the Korean animation market remains largely unexplored due to a heavy focus on marketable kids' content. Korea could shift its focus to webtoons, as successful cases of turning webtoons into animations in the past will make it easier to attract investment. The combination of a well-loved webtoon and Korea's advanced animation technology means there's the potential to start a fresh wave of success. This could elevate Korean animations to being a major cultural export item like K-pop and K-dramas. Bororo, that's interesting. <laughs> and I've noticed that successful animation like Bororo have extended beyond just the content itself. You're right. So Dr. Yang, who was mentioned in my report, he said Bororo has kind of introduced a so-called Korean Disney model, which is OSMU, which stands for One Source Multi-Use. Mm -hmm. So in the animation industry, revenue got generated through merchandise and theme parks based on the animation often surpasses direct sales from animation videos. So for example, Bororo's direct sales contribute only around 10% of total revenue, while the majority, approximately 90%, comes from Bororo merchandise. Oh, wow. And what other far-reaching benefits could these animations have? Well, on a global scale, these animations can really enhance Korea's cultural power in the global um, stage and also national image. So according to the Export-Import Bank of Korea, uh, purchasing content merchandise from Korea has the effect of increasing exports by about 1.8 times the purchase amount. So applying this to Bororo, buying $100 worth of Bororo merchandise can lead to an additional $180 spent on other Korean products. Our culture correspondent, Song Yujin, thank you for your report. Thank you.